Hey everyone, Carl Auer from Carl. Bleh. Hey everyone, Carl Auer from Carl Auer Photography here, and I'm ticked off. Let's roll the uh, intro and get right into it. Okay, I know this must be a record. This is like three videos in three days, but um, there's been some things that I've been trying to record, and between moving and everything, I just haven't had the time. So I wanted to get these done now while they're fresh in my mind. Uh, I've been watching some YouTube videos recently of other photographers. I'm not going to name any names. These are photographers that are either somewhat famous. Uh, you may not know them uh, unless you've been in the business for a while. You may not recognize their name. Uh, they do shoot for some major wires. And uh, a couple of them have done videos on uh, shooting, sports for, uh, shooting sports on a budget. And they've basically come out and said, you can't do it. You need these big white lenses that cost ten, fourteen thousand dollars, and you need the the one D series bodies that are six thousand dollars. And you know, I, that's just baloney. A couple of videos ago, I did a basic sports photography kit, um, and that kit was um, it was pointed at high end to mid range. Uh, really the gear that is ideal for sports photography. Uh, the bodies I was looking at was, of course, the 1DX D4 or D5. Uh, I was using Canon as an example because I'm a Canon shooter. But the 1DX Mark II, I mean, yeah, it's a $6,000 camera, and not everyone can afford that. And the kit that had a 24-70 to 2.8 lens, a 70-200 to 2.8 lens, and a 50mm 1.8 Along with that 1DX body, I mean, all Canon gear, that came out over $10,000. No, that's not affordable. But I gave you options. Uh, I said that with the 7D Mark II, instead of those, uh, um, uh, instead of the 1D uh, X Mark II, or uh, 80D, um, those two bodies with third party lenses, you could get into. Uh, a brand new kit for around thirty-one, thirty-three hundred dollars, depending on sales and and discounts and stuff, um, and that that's more affordable. A again, thirty-three hundred dollars is still quite a bit of money, but I, I wanted to touch base on this again and really um, show you how affordable. Uh, sports photography kits can actually be and that you can actually get out there for a reasonable price um, back when I first started photography uh, it was film days that's when it was really not affordable um, you you had your initial cost of buying a camera body and they always say don't worry about the body get what you can afford but focus your money on your lenses Lenses are what makes the, the pictures sharp and, and beautiful. And, and that's true. And that's true today, too. Uh, but lenses from even third-party manufacturers are really good today. Uh, but then beyond the, the camera body, I mean, I started out with a... Uh, uh, when I actually started uh, photography classes, I started with a Pentax K1000, uh, the standard film school, photo school camera. But it wasn't long after that that I jumped into a Minolta body. Uh, I had a Minolta 7000i. Uh, it was when the i just came out. Uh, I had been looking at the 7000 for a while. I um, it was looking at the 9000. I ended up getting a 9000. In fact, I had two 9000s and uh, uh, 800SI, uh, 9XI. Uh, I had quite a few uh, Minolta products, but um, uh, the the Minolta body I had was it was a good five hundred dollar body back then. Uh, back then, today that would be like a thousand dollar body today. And then, of course, the lenses. I mean, the three hundred millimeter two point eight for Minolta was seven thousand uh, dollars. Seventy to two hundred. Actually, I think it was an eighty to two hundred two point eight was not much cheaper. Uh, it was, I mean, it was, it was more expensive than the Canon or the Nikon versions. Then along the way, somebody gave me an old Canon film camera. I think it was a 620 or a 630 and a couple lenses. And I was like, you know, I kind of like this Canon. 
So I got uh, Elon 70, uh, EOS 3, uh, EOS 1, um, and started buying lenses for them. And they just great cameras. And uh, But then when I got into digital, when I started looking at digital, it was really expensive. I first started looking at digital SLRs when I was still with Minolta. And really the only thing for Minolta was... Uh, the RD-175, AGFA had a version of it that was the Minolta body. It just was branded AGFA, used the Minolta lenses. Um, and then Minolta sold the RD-175, which was uh, a, I can't remember what body it was. I think it was like a 5SI or a 500SI body. And it used a hard drive as the media. Um, one one megapixel camera, I think. Uh, and they wanted like $4,000 for that. And I was like, wow, I just can't afford that. And then in uh, 2003, I think it was when the Digital Rebel was released, uh, Canon had more affordable cameras out by that time. The 1D, original 1D was out. It was a $5,000 camera. They had the, the 30D and the 60D. And actually, I think they were, it was the D30 and the D60. Uh, D30 was 3 megapixel, D60 was 6 megapixel, and then here came the Digital Rebel. A thousand bucks, 6 megapixel camera, and that's the first digital SLR I got. Um, now you can get Rebels for right around $400. Uh, $450, $500 for just the body. Um, while I said in that earlier video the, the Rebel cameras are not a good sports camera, even though I said that, you could still shoot sports with them. If that's what, if you're not if you're looking for just a general all around camera and your kids are playing like Pee Wee football or Little League baseball or whatever, Digital Rebel's a good little camera just to capture those photos. Uh, you they pair with any of the Canon lenses. Uh, and in fact, they have uh, my One D series camera. They have lenses on the on the Rebel series that won't fit on my One D series. That's the EFS series of lenses. Um, but the EFS lenses are not that fast. They do make a seventeen. I think a seventeen to fifty or six. There, there's a a nice zoom, mid range zoom. That's a two point eight lens, and that's that's okay for like indoor sports and. Uh, a grab camera for like an end zone for a football, but again, you got to just remember the the Rebel series does have limitations. Um, you're not going to see the ten or twelve or fourteen frames per second from a Rebel. Um, There's going to be some modes that um, don't allow you to do some things. I know I, I'm not familiar with the Rebels anymore. I know that a lot of people buy them for the video capabilities. Uh, which is great, but um, I know on the original Digital Rebel, when you shot in manual mode, you could shoot in RAW, but you only had one shot focus. That's where it locks on to your subject and focuses, and then if your subject moves, you've got to refocus. There was no AI servo, and there was no AI focus. Um, and I had to work around that because I shot in manual. So I was doing my own... Uh, AI servo. I was constantly refocusing with the the back button focus. Um, the, that was one thing you could do on the Rebel. You could do back back button focus, and um, I ended up downloading a pirated. Well, not pirated. It was a. It was Russian firmware. Some guy in Russia made uh, his own firmware for the Rebel, and it unlocked a lot of things in the Rebel that you the Canon just didn't allow you to do. Anytime I had to send the camera into Canon, I had to revert back to the normal firmware. That was no big deal. Um, but um, that's how I got around some of my shooting with the Rebel. I did pick up a Rebel XT, which was their 8 megapixel follow-up to the original digital Rebel, and it was more open. Um, and I picked that up just because I wanted a, a third body that was small, something that if I went traveling or something, it was small and lightweight that didn't take up a lot of room, but I found the Rebel XT was just too small for my hands. Even with the battery grip, it was just too tiny a camera. Um, I was too used to the, the more pro series bodies. Um, okay. That being said, while the Rebels are usable, uh, you just have to know there are limitations. They don't have the 10 frames per second. 
Um, the focus is not going to be as good as a se or ADD, a 7D Mark II, or a 1DX Mark II. Uh, the focus on those cameras are going to be great. Uh, even the the 5D and the 6D series, is, you could use those for sports. You're going to give up your field of view crop. That field of view crop uh, is going to be a full frame, uh, 35 millimeter uh, uh, image. So uh, on a 100 millimeter lens on a 5D, it's a 100 millimeter lens, just like it is on the 1D um, X Mark II. Whereas on the 7D Mark II, it's a 160 millimeter field of view crop. So you get that bonus of, of a longer lens and a shorter lens uh, physically. Um, and you can get like a 1D Mark, 1D5, no, a 5D Mark II, Mark III, uh, used for a reasonable price. The three would probably be the one I'd look at. Um, fours are still too ex too new and too expensive, um, but so I mean you can you can do just about any bot any body in the Canon range you can use to shoot sports. Uh, I was just focusing on the on the eighty D, the seventy Mark II, and the one DX series uh, because those are primarily their sports related cameras. Now, besides you looking at third market lenses, you can look at other lenses you can look at used lenses uh in fact a lot of the lenses i have purchased over the years have been second hand they hold their value really good they're not as cheap sometimes uh as you'd like them to be but you can save a couple hundred dollars on newer lenses if you buy them on the used market and if you're not needing the top of the line brand new just out lens you can get a previous version for a really good price now before i start talking about uh like canon lenses uh let me talk about third-party lenses again uh one of my long lenses uh i i've shot with for nine years the sigma 120 millimeter to 300 millimeter f 2.8 lens uh the one i have is the very first one the original model they've had I think three revisions. Uh, the second version added some digital stuff, DG uh, digital coatings on it to uh, correct uh, chromatic uh, aberrations, and uh, uh, then there was a one that introduced their optical stabilization. Now they have the current version is called the Sports Line. It's the very first lens in their Sports Line. They have an Art Line, a Contemporary Line, and a Sports Line. Um, and the, the 120 to 300 2.8 was their very first sports lens. That the original version was, uh, I had a love hate relationship with it. It was a sharp lens when it went, wanted to focus. Uh, with my 1D, it focused great. With my 7D, it was if it was bright, sunny day, focused great. Uh, otherwise, it was hit or miss. Um, Although my original 7D, I also had a love-hate relationship because any lens, it was hit or miss focusing. The 7D Mark II is a phenomenal camera and locks on all the time. Um, you can find that original 120 to 300 2.8. And now 120 to 300, that's, that's a zoom. And it's a constant f2.8 across the line. No other uh, manufacturer makes that. Um... You can get that 120 to 300 2.8, the very original version, for right around $1,000, $1,100. In fact, uh, I'm going to be selling mine for $1,000. I'm hoping to get it for 900 or get 900 for it. Um, and I'll get into why I'm selling it in a minute. Um, the newer versions, uh, the second version, expect to pay about $1,500 used. Uh, the third version, probably right around $2,000 used. And the newest version retails. For thirty-five hundred dollars, give or take a hundred dollars, uh, I've seen it on sale for thirty-four ninety-nine. I've seen it as expensive as thirty-seven ninety-nine, um, but it, it's it's still much cheaper than the uh, Canon three hundred two eight. Plus, it's got a zoom on it. Um, it's not as fast focusing, but it is much quicker than the original version, uh, and. Almost up to the Canon standards. Uh, it does, ha does have their optical stabilization, and it does have focus limiting, which will increase the, the focal speed. 
Um, and you can get a little, for like 50 bucks, you can get a little USB port for it. Uh, it's a dock that go, that it plugs into the lens uh, uh, mount, and you hook it up to your computer, and you can adjust the focusing characteristics to it. If it's front focusing or back focusing, you can adjust that. You can do a whole bunch of neat things with that little USB dock. Update firmware, all sorts of things. So that's something to think about, too. Uh, you can get that used. I've seen it used for as cheap as $2,600, $2,700. Um, another idea is there's an older lens by, by Sigma that a lot of people, I, I personally didn't shoot with it, um, but I know people on the Nikon side who have shot with it, and they loved it, and I don't believe they make a new version of it, but uh, the 100-300 to 300 F4, a uh, constant F4, a great daytime lens with the higher ISO cameras of today, um, it would be a great uh, low-light lens, too. Uh, uh, as long, if you're shooting in a well-lit stadium, maybe at 3,200 ISO, that you should be able to use that lens. You might have to push your ISO to 6,400, but uh, it's compact. Uh, it gives you a good range, 100 to 300. Uh, you just don't, you're giving up that 2.8 for the F4. I saw one used recently at a pawn shop for 400 bucks. Now, um, let, let me talk about used gear. Uh, right here, I have a 1D Mark IV. Canon 1D. Yeah, it says Mark IV down there. It, sorry, the the tripod thing is in the way. Um, and it's a 70 to 200 2.8 IS Series 1. Series 2 is out now. Series 2 is about, I want to say $2,200, $2,300, maybe more. Um, individually, uh, you can find these, these used for... The 1D Mark IV for about $1,400, and the the lens for about anywhere from uh, $1,000 to $1,200. Uh, $1,200, you're going to get a better quality lens. Um, I did some searching, and I saw a guy on Craigslist that said, hey, I've got a, a low-count 1D Mark IV. Uh, I banged it up a little bit. Uh, just shooting. I've been <laughs> using it a lot lately. Um a brand new, basically brand new 1D Mark IV, low shutter count, had like 9,000 uh, shots on it, and a uh, uh, 70 to 200, 2.8 IS lens, 2,100 bucks. I jumped on it. You you cannot find these individually for less than like twenty five, twenty six hundred dollars. I jumped on it for 2,100 dollars. This I will shoot at ISO 10,000 on this day all day long. Well, not all day long. I mean. If, I, if I'm shooting night games, ISO 10,000 looks phenomenal. Uh, this lens, I got this, I picked it up because my 70 to 200 2.8, uh, while I took my leave of absence, I don't know if it's gathered dust or what, but it won't focus now. So I've got to send it into Canon. So getting a newer version, that was great for me. Uh, so here, here's a great deal. You get the, the Sigma or Tamron or Tokina 24 to 70. And uh, a 50 millimeter 1.8, you're well under that $3,000 threshold I was talking about in the, the previous video. And you've got a great sports camera. This is 10 frames per second. Uh, 16 megapixel. Uh, just phenomenal. A big, big, big view screen on the back. Uh, just great camera. Um, the other... Uh, uh, lens I wanted to talk about was the one I'm using to replace my uh, 120 to 300 2.8. Um, and now, right now, this is mounted to my 70 Mark II. I'm not going to take it off, but uh, I will sh take the lens cover off here. Um, I was looking for a 300 IS. I didn't want to spend six thousand dollars on a brand new lens. Well, I did, but I didn't want to spend that much. I, I wanted that lens, but didn't want to spend the money. Um, and so I was looking for a series one lens and I was watching eBay. I was watching the different photo forms, uh, sports shooter, Fred Miranda. Um, I was watching Facebook. Uh, I was watching a whole bunch of different, um, uh, places. And one day I thought, you know what? I'm going to look at Amazon. 
And I went in, and of course Amazon said, oh, well, this lens you're looking for is discontinued. But we have new and used copies from these sellers. So I clicked on the new and used, and the very first one that popped up had no pictures, and it said uh, Canon 300mm 2.8 IS, uh, great condition, $2,500. So I emailed the seller and said, hey, do you have any photos of the lens? Uh, are you the original owner? What can you tell me? And he emailed me right back. Like within 15 minutes, I had an email filled with pictures. The lens looked great. He said, there's no dust. There's no fungus. I bought it in 2004, brand new. Used it for a couple shoots. Then threw it in my photo closet, which was climate controlled. And it sat there for the last 13 years. And I'm just ready to sell it. And I asked him, I emailed him right back. I said, if I order it right now. Can you put it in the mail tomorrow morning and have it to me by Friday? He said, I guarantee it. If you buy it right now, you will have it by Friday morning. Friday morning, I had it. This is the 300 millimeter 2.8 IS Series 1. Not a mark on it. This is basically a brand new lens. It came in the Canon lens trunk. Came with the lens hood. Perfect condition. These break all the time. Uh, perfect condition. Uh, the lens hood, everything, uh, just blew me away for the price, $2,500. Um, I, the ones I was finding for between $23 and $2,600 had paint chips, looked like they had been to war and back, and just insane. Um, at the same time I bought it, I went ahead and I signed up for Amazon Prime to get free shipping on a... Uh, 1.4 by teleconverter. I bought the Series 2. Series 3 is out, but the Series 3 uh, sells for about $500. And I could get the Series 2 used, again, in mint condition, uh, for $200, uh, plus free shipping on Amazon Prime, plus I get Prime for a while. Uh, I think I'm going to keep it, too, because I like the shows on Prime Video. And I want to turn this living space into an automated section this place and the echo is one of the things I'm looking at so having prime with echo will be good but um so that basically for twenty seven hundred dollars I got a 300 millimeter 2.8 IS series one in mint condition with the trunk keys um everything that was supposed to come with it uh and I got a 1.4 by teleconverter that may, mates very well with it. And if you look at the previous, one well, of the previous videos I did, shooting the Colorado High School Soccer Championships, at the end of that video, there are images. And there are some tight vertical images of players running with the ball in front of them. Really, I mean, it looks like they're cropped tight. They're not cropped. They are full frame with the, the 70 Mark II uh, 1.4 by teleconverter and the 300 and they were tack sharp just incredible and the focus was like that just insane so that's my budget lens i mean this is this yeah i could have gone out and spent seven thousand dollars getting the brand new is version 2 of the 300 2.8 and the brand new uh 300 or 1.4 by uh, teleconverter but instead i got the previous models they work fine. I have no complaints on them. The images they deliver uh, are tack sharp, and they focus quick. That's what I need. Would I like the Series 2 and the Series 3 teleconverter? Well, yeah. But I'm not ready to spend the money on that. I was ready to spend the money on this. So, shooting sports photography, or sports photography on a budget is entirely possible. Don't let any other YouTubers out there say, oh, you can't do it. It's not worth it. And I'll tell you one of the reasons why these guys are saying it's not worth it. Uh, they're not looking at youth sports. Youth sports is where the money is at. You can easily, shooting high school, uh, if you're, if you're a, a booster shooter and you're shooting every sport at a high school and you're doing team and individuals, if you're pricing yourself right, you can easily walk away from a school year with fifty or sixty thousand dollars in profit, easily. 
if you're shooting for a wire service on a spec basis only and you're going out and you're, you're getting sales here and there you might be seeing fifty to a hundred dollars a month uh, yeah I shoot for wires uh, I shoot selectively for wires I shoot what I want to what I know I can get sales on um, I shoot what others won't shoot like oh, I don't really care about that I, if they're not going to shoot it that's more of a chance for me to get a sale so I'm going to jump on it um, and then requests when there's a request that comes out that oh a client needs this hey there's a client lined up there's a sale here I'll go shoot that I'm not going to shoot I'm not going to go to an NFL game uh, and shoot the Broncos on spec because there are going to be so many other shooters there uh, and we're all going to be rushing to the media room and the likelihood of them looking at my wire over USA Today or Getty is very slim but if if a shoot if a client says oh wow you know what you guys have a photographer he I can't remember his name but he shot uh, he he shot some um, soccer for you guys last year and he had some wonderful shots we'd love for him to shoot uh, uh, the Broncos for us or the the Rockies for us or um, basketball or whatever um and they'll come to me then and say hey we've had a client request you to go shoot something i know i'm going to get paid i've had wire services say uh ask a client say hey here, here's their email here's their phone number contact the photographer directly that cuts out the percentage that goes to the wire because they're now dealing with me directly um and i've had that a couple times too um it's just uh, uh, people who only shoot for the wires realize very quickly that, yeah, sports photography is expensive. But if you're shooting for profit, not just for yourself, if you're shooting for profit uh, and you haven't figured this out by now, youth sports is where it's at. And just as a quick example before we end this video, um, one year I shot team and individual photos for Little League. Uh, 44 teams, about, I want to say about 500 kids. Uh, I, and I did everything on my own. I, I did the, the scheduling of shooting. I did the, the forms. I printed the forms out myself, uh, put all the, the merchandise on it, the photo packages, the poses, uh, that they could choose from everything. I did it all myself. Um, I went to the fields for three weeks straight for two hours a day, set up my lights in a section of the field that I could have a backstop or a, a good background, and I shot the team in individual photos. Um, I printed, I used MPix Pro online printing to print absolutely everything from uh, my actual physical prints to buttons, t-shirts, mouse pads, magnets, everything. Everything that they could want. MPix Pro handled for me. They delivered them to me in bulk, and then I would separate them out by orders, um, and I would uh, put them into envelopes and then deliver them back to the league. Uh, they were all prepaid, so when people showed up to have their, their kids' photos done, they were paying me then. I took cash and checks. Uh, I wish I would have taken credit cards be at that time, but I didn't. I wasn't set up for it. Um, this was before PayPal and Square and everything had uh, the credit card readers. Um, and I walked away after that. After all my costs for printing, I walked away with fifteen thousand dollars profit for three weeks' work. It was hard work. It was a lot of work. Wrangling some of these coaches and players was not easy. Uh, there were a lot of reschedules on some shoots because uh, coaches were just... they. The, 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 coaches should be focusing on the games and practices and winning. 
but they also have to realize that, hey, this is more than just playing games. The parents want this. I've got to set time aside to do the photos. And I, there were a lot of coaches that just didn't get it and didn't care. And it was literally, I'd have to go over to them and go, hey, you guys haven't practiced now? Get up to the photo section right now. Let me do your team and individuals. You can still have practice, but we need to get this done now. And I would stand there until they started walking up there, until I saw the coach go up. And then I'd go up and get everything taken care of. Um, so anyway, that's my little rant video on uh, sports photography on a budget. Uh, it can be done. Um so, uh, get out there. If you want to shoot sports, get out there and shoot sports. It's, it, it's fun. Um, if, if you're not into sports, whatever you're doing, whatever you're shooting, you can make money doing this. You just have to know what your client base is and how to market yourself. And uh, if, if you're like me, I love shooting the pros. I'd rather shoot the pros than anything else, but when it comes down to money, um, I'll shoot kids day every day, every single day, uh, because I know I can make a living off that. So I will do everything that I can. When I don't have a youth shoot, I'll look at college pro, uh, Olympic level, World Cup level. I'll look at what else is going on that I could go shoot something. But uh, if I've got a choice between, oh, going to a high school football game or going to a college football game, I'll take that high school football game. It's maybe three hours as opposed to eight hours. I'm going to get at least 100 to $200 in sales. I might get $10, $15 in sales from the college game. Uh, I won't get any free food at the high school game, but that doesn't matter. Uh, I will get free food at the uh, football game. I've got to drive 25 miles for a football game. I've got to drive five miles for the uh, for the high school game. Yeah. Balancing it out, it's more economical to go shoot the high school game. But if I don't have a high school game, if there's nothing going on, I'll jump on that college game in a second. Because I, there is a very good chance that Sports Illustrated, ESPN, Sporting News, somebody's going to pick up one of my photos. Uh, but if it's web use only, I'm only going to see a few dollars from it. If it's print, I could see 20 30 40 up to $2,000 for it. It's just hit and miss. That's where these other guys are saying it, sports, photo sports photography on a budget is not possible. If they would expand their horizons and shoot more than just the, for the wires... They would see it is affordable. Until next time, I'm Carl Auer. Keep shooting.